All right, there we go. Hi everyone, how's it going? Team here, and this is BXJS Development Livestream, and uh, we are continuing to build the website. I think today we're actually gonna finish at least the first version of it. So looking at our uh, plan, we actually did the news page completely, right? So I'm gonna clean that. Uh, we did the videos, or actually, wait, wait, I'm lying. We haven't done the videos, but the Thing is, I don't think it's worth doing it. We're gonna have the links to the YouTube anyway, so why would I have another collection of videos when it's already on YouTube, right? So this is my thinking, at least for now. We're gonna see how that develops. Maybe we're gonna have it later at some point. But uh, for now, I'm just gonna remove that uh, because I wanna release the first version of the website. So we did the whole search thing with everything that is uh, basically written here. And for hosting, I think I'm just gonna go with my own server for now and we're gonna see how that develops. So basically what we need to finish is add the info page and then we have another bug that was pointed out by, uh, I think it was Fabrice. Uh, the problem is that my current webhook validation is actually broken, right? Uh, hey Bako, welcome to the stream. So the problem is that I validated a hook in a very naive manner. So I just took the signature and compared it to my secret, which is well, not exactly how it works, right? So this is, this is, this is a very bad validation. And this is susceptible to all kinds of uh, attacks, right? So secret is not used in plain and needs an encryption. So there's a developer guide over here that explains how it's actually done. So the way it works is that GitHub uh, takes the it adds the signature, but the signature is not the secret itself. It's actually the uh, HMAC uh, hex with uh, generated with SHA one, which includes the secret and the body payload. So it's like it has to do all of that stuff. And this is exactly what we have to fix here because this won't really work uh, if we do it. Um, so if, if the GitHub sends the request, right, this will break essentially. So now I am, I think we saw the OctoKit thingy last time. There we go. There's the OctoKit webhooks. And I think it might be worth just using it essentially because I don't feel like implementing all of it myself. Like it has the middlewares and everything, but I think it also has this verify methods that basically just, uh, uh, there's also standalone. What is this? Uh, oh, oh, you can actually just have the verification thing. Cool. Uh, yeah, perfect. This is what we're going to do. We're just gonna use the verification method. It takes in the secret, event data, and signature. And uh, signature is calculated by the sign method. Okay, so how does this work? Um, secret event, okay, so you generate the signature. <coughs> Apologies. Let me drink some water. So you generate the signature yourself and then throw it to verify, or wait, no, the verify. So the signature would be from the header, right? The event data is gonna be the body and then the secret is our secret. Now, hey, Matrix, welcome to the stream. Long time no see, mate. <laughs> All right, um, right. So let's, I guess, let's just install the package itself, right? Uh, let's start with this npm install. Uh, let's close this bug and then add the index page and then deploy it and set up the webhooks uh, from the BXJS weekly and see how all of that will work together. So I think, well, let's just check with uh, bundle phobia. I think the package itself is actually not that heavy. Yes, yeah, so it's just 13 kilobytes, which is nothing basically for Node.js app, right? So it's quite uh, minor. Hey, Kevin, welcome to the stream. All right, uh, so we need verification methods. So I guess we could just use the verify um, method over here. And uh, I guess I just require it here, right? And we're gonna have to verify. Okay, let me just, uh, so this is gonna be const secret. Uh, hey Fabrice, welcome to the stream. All right, uh, we got this secret. No, sorry, that's not the secret. That's gonna be the hash, right? And then we're gonna have the secret. Uh, yes, because you are streaming now during the working hours. Is it working better? I mean, I'm just streaming during the working hours right now because I'm on vacations and don't have to work myself, you know, so this kind of <laughs> reason. It works kind of better for me because then I have the evening free and I can, you know, play games and watch movies and be with my family essentially. But um, in the end, it's not going to last for too long because I'm going to have to go back to work. 
Okay, uh, match a signature, right? So we got the ah, signature. This is what we should call it. And uh, const uh, matches signature, right? So we do this. So we gonna rename some things signature. There we go. Uh, secret and the event data is gonna be request body, right? And uh, all we're gonna say here if it's not matches signature, I think, um, yeah, I think this basically should make it work. Webhook secret. Uh, yeah, sort of with that. We're fine. Okay. Um, how do we test that? Does GitHub have any webhook testing? GitHub webhook testing. Testing webhooks. There we go. Uh, listing recent deliveries, configuring your local server, digging into results. How do I test it? That doesn't seem to be. Every webhook has recent deliveries, configure a local server, testing your payloads. Um, that doesn't seem to be um, relevant. Okay, um, I mean, what we could do is we can have a look at the tests in the webhooks packages, right? And uh, I guess integration tests, uh, verify test. There we go, this is what we want. So we got, uh, here's our event payload secret signature. I guess they pre-generated the signature, right? And in our case, I think I just want to create a new uh, test.js file for now. And what we are going to be doing here is so first of all, we're going to start our server, right? npm run dev. I'm going to open another thingy here. So we got the server running and now what we need to do in test, we need to um, generate the signature. So first of all, my secret secret is gonna be not my secret. It's actually gonna be from environment config, right? So in test, test case, I mean, it probably should be a unit test or integration test as well, but I'm just too lazy for that. So I'm just gonna test it here and see if it works. And if it works, then, um, we are literally going to be fine for now. Like we are going to write tests at some points because that is kind of, you know, <laughs> just to be just to be at peace with myself, basically. Right. So we got the sign method. Um, and sign method is going to generate the signature. There we go. There's our signature sign secrets and event payload. And that's going to get our signature. And now we need to, I guess, I mean, I guess we can just say console log signature, right? There's our signature. So if I run node test now, we are going to see the signature. This is our signature. And if we take that and copy this, and then we do curl header. Yeah, okay. And then I guess should just do this, right? Internal error, secret event payload and signature required, but I just passed it. What are you talking about? Uh, we got the secret, right? We got the request. Oh, I did not have body, right? God damn it. Um, right, my body should be full bar. Okay, um, so that's da, 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 da. And then I need curl. How do I post data with curl? Because this is a thing that I never remember. I kind of got used to using HTTP on the, oh, what do you call it? Uh, on Mac, but yeah. <laughs> Okay, minus D and then just a key value. Okay, let's try that. So minus D and then we got the string and this is gonna be full and bar, right? Unsupported media type. Uh, yeah, okay. You want a application JSON header probably, right? Command shift V, uh, oh, whoops, that is too much stuff inserted. That is not what we want. Uh, thank you very much. And it actually, what does it return? Untype application JSON. Uh, blah, 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 blah. There is what? What is that? What are you returning? Um, API update meta char set. What is this? Loaded pages. Next page development. Four oh four. Why is it four oh four? Wait a second. I'm sending it to the correct API update, right? Yes. Uh, did I? Is that the, the does the order matters for it? So maybe we do this, right? And then we will like okay, like this. I feel like I'm screwing something up, but uh, yeah. 
I uh, know that's still not found. Get up. Oh, because I'm sending a post. No, right. I'm um, no, I don't think I override the header. I just send the post request, right? Because the headers, they, they stack if I am correct, but I'm sending actually a post request. So this should be a post. Right. And I think the this means that the GitHub also sends post requests. Yeah, okay. So this is the problem we have. Actually, we are not getting it anymore. We're posting it and it should have been a post from the very beginning because the signature depends on the payload makes all sense. And this now should start working. Right? Yep, we are working cool. So it actually works fine. Perfect. All right, so I guess we could commit that uh, we can kill the testing. We can uh, say, okay, uh, so what's our diff? So I, I'm not going to commit the BXGS plan thing for now. I'm just going to say add package and uh, package lock and add GitHub. Uh, whoops, sorry, server GitHub. There we go. Right. So just check that we we added the verify. We changed it to post. We wrote written the verification correctly. Uh, yes, the the headers in curl definitely stack. Uh, so the problem was just I haven't had a post request here. So um, and commit fix uh, GitHub webhook validation closes. What was I think it was the first one, right? If I remember correctly, yes, it was. Okay, cool. Uh, sign my commit and push it online. So we should see the issue. I should really set up all the passphrases auto finish or auto completion out of whatever. I'm getting tired of typing them every time. There we go. Okay, so we did that. Now, essentially, what's left is um, just the info page, right? So we got the index page. And this is going to be our info page. And uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to copy all of this. I am actually going to remove that uh, plan thing. And we are going to have this over here. Uh, no, that does not look nice. Let me just, um, I guess, put all of that into the paragraphs. Nah, come on. Is not what I want. Okay, so let me maybe just do it like this. Da, 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 da. P. Yeah, of course, you can insert them and this one as well P. And I think we're fine now, right? So uh, am I my server is not running anymore, right? Yeah, okay. NPM run dev, I think yeah, so we just basically create the index page and then deploy that because theoretically it works. And then we're going to test the webhook to make sure that it actually works. Mm. And uh, I guess that will be it for today's stream. So first of all, we got to remove that uh, content thing, right? So we no longer need that. We're just gonna have two sections for now. Uh, we can also discuss the ideas that I have about the weekly and content indexing, which might be curious. I don't know, like if you guys want to see that implemented, I probably will implement it anyway, at some points. But uh, yeah, okay, so we got the about we got the weekly weekly does works and loads the latest episodes, we got the search button still needs some design uh, here, we probably should do the episodes list in a more um, in a paginated manner because I mean, okay, for now, it's 40 episodes, not too bad. But at one point, there's gonna be really hard to read. All right, but uh, let us let us uh, do the main page, right? So streaming schedule. Um, here's the problem, I don't really have one. It's like, I guess, yeah, I guess we could just uh, Oh boy, how do we do that? Okay, so first of all, let me open the Bulma and I guess we're going to use the grid to make it look slightly nicer. Uh, then again, you know, I'm terrible at design. So I'm probably going to ask uh, some of my friends who are nicer at that to give me some hints on how can I make this look nicer. And uh, so we got container is widescreen. Uh, where's my grid thing? Uh, hero folder tiles, nah, layout columns. There we go. This is what I want. Basic. Um, right. So how do I want this to look? So we got let me think. So we got the streaming schedule. This probably should be on top as a separate like banner or something, right? 
And then we got the social links. This is the second section. And then we got Twitter feed. I don't want Twitter feed in here. I know that I tweet mostly garbage, so we definitely don't want that in there. And right, so we want streaming schedule, and then we essentially want a bunch of links to uh, things like uh, YouTube as well, Twitch, and all the other stuff. This might be the Oracle React Calendar Timeline. Okay, let's have a look. Uh, yeah, that <laughs> that looks nice, but that's definitely an overkill. That is, I mean, my schedule is literally gonna be like, hey, I stream uh, software development on Wednesdays. I stream BXGS weekly on Saturdays and then video games whenever basically, right? So which is not very consistent and uh, my schedule is, is a mess, which is also should be somewhere there. Uh, so I think we're just gonna format it um, simpler, right? So let us, uh, so let me think. So first of all, we need that div class name content, right? So this we actually have proper formatting here. Uh, this should be a bit nicer now. Yes, there we go. And the first div is going to be um, class name. So streaming schedule, essentially, what I want to say is, um, I guess Wednesday, maybe strong, right? Strong software development stream like i i wanna i like i guess i need a way to update this schedule in a simple way but i guess redeploying the website is not that hard um so yeah basically i'm just gonna type the typical schedule that i have when i'm working not the crazy one that i have right now right when i'm streaming whenever uh bxgs weekly podcasts uh, so we're on the stream stream. Let's just call it this way. And then strong, um, I guess, uh, I don't know. Dating the HTML5 lingo came from you and do everything with a div and a span school. Um, yeah, I mean, semantic markup is nice, but I'm terrible at that as well. So yeah. <laughs> Okay, uh, we want what? Column, I guess, maybe. Why are, you, why, why are you complaining? What do you know? Oh, React. You want React in scope. Okay, import React from React. Uh, you happy now? All right, so this is not quite what we want. Div class name, I guess. Uh, what we can do is we can split that into two columns, right? Uh, columns. And then we have one column. And then we have another column. God damn it, stop closing the divs right after I type them. I have to find the setting and disable it because this is annoying. Okay, so this is kind of okay ish. And then first of all, we're going to say here say streaming sh 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 schedule. How do you type that? Okay, not quite okay, but uh, fine. I guess because of the nav bar, you need to add something to the thingy, right? Um, I, th I remember having this problem as well last time. Let's see components. Too bad the crazy schedule can't last. Well, I mean, and it's tough to stream so much, you know? It's like, it's exhausting actually. I, I already complained about that on the Discord and I still don't understand how those full-time streamers stream for like 10 hours a day. I would die from that. It's like, you have to... You have to think about software development. You have to talk. You have to explain what you're doing because, you know, after the stream, my throat is like sore for two more hours and I just sit in the silence and drink my tea, basically. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's it's a tough business. It's a tough business. All right. So what is, how do I uh, layouts? Do we have it somewhere here? Component, uh, nav bar, container, bureau section, footer. Is that navbar should be in container? Is that what you want? Oh, we already no, we have container. We have the content, which is the thing that is basically shifted down a bit too much. So why are you shifted down? And what do I need to enter? Is widescreen is full HD is fluid. Hmm. All right, level hero section can be like section maybe. You do one section section is that align you correctly oh, yeah yeah there we go okay that looks better we're getting there slowly getting there okay so we want 
we actually want the separate um, sections here, right? So we want the header to be like, hey, this is actually the streaming schedule. And then we want to have a separate section, which is like links to different things. So I guess, um, how do I do this properly? Can we just be like, okay, here's our H2 maybe, so that it's not too big. Uh, okay, that looks better. And then streaming schedule, maybe we don't need this column here. And then maybe some emojis, camera, we have camera, there we go. Or no, you know what, I have a better idea, React, uh, I think it was React icons. This package is amazing. Like if you ever need to use um, icons in React, but don't want to drag the whole like font for it, you know, like font awesome, if you, for example, use it, it's really good, it looks really nice. But um, you drag the whole font awesome, which is quite big. So what this package does, it actually uses SVGs from the fonts to allow you tree shaking so that when you use the icons, you will only load the ones that you actually use, which makes it super tiny, which is freaking great. Um, I think you should not have content and columns directly. See the nesting example in Bulma docs. Uh, that might be the case. Columns, basic, uh, I mean, they don't have content here, right? Uh, responsive and nesting, there we go. Let's check it out. Columns, notific, I mean, we don't have notifications, right? So we don't really care about that. Uh, responsiveness, I think it's fine to have the content there. It's not like, you know, it's plain text content for now, we're gonna see how that goes, but I don't think there's any like problems with it necessarily. At least that always worked for me. I mean, if you want to nest the uh, components there, sure, it will work, but I don't think we have to do this for now. All right, uh, npm run dev restart the development, and now we want to have um, font awesome. Is there a Twitch thing in font awesome? There's probably, uh, no, 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 I wanted icons, right? And uh, I think I need to allow the, whoops, JavaScript and uh, Twitch. Are you here, Twitch? Yes, you are, okay. So this is FA Twitch, right? So we are, how do I do this with them again? Uh, okay, now I just hope they've actually have it in there and uh, FA Twitch, there we go, cool. Uh, and FA Twitch and it's, whoops, yeah, I just wanted a one tag, there we go. I think that should, whoops, God damn it. Reload that, are we running? Yes, we are, nice, uh, that looks almost okay. I think we need some aligning here because this is a bit, a bit weird. I don't know if that will actually work, but we're gonna see. I like when my stuff is, is properly aligned. So <laughs> I, I recently saw this jo joke about the um, Flexbox and uh, alignment that is the same as the USB you have to try like three four properties because you, before you figure out the one that actually aligns the stuff the way you want which is uh, kind of true but it's not it's not the vertical line right so we want the oh man I just gotta google it flexbox vertical line what was the thing um, it was align items <laughs> god damn it Align items center, no, no, okay. Justify content center, no, okay, also not. Um, yeah, okay, I get maybe. And how do I align that properly? I guess it actually takes the whole height, right? Which is, maybe we can just make the icon smaller. Is there like sizes here? The love great uh, vertically aligned middle on the SVG. Um, but I think it's, it's like the SVG is, is if you can see here, it's actually within the bounds. It's just because the icon is asymmetrical, that looks a bit weird. But uh, let's try this vertical line middle. Oh, okay, cool. That well, thank you. That was easier than I expected. Thank you very much. So I think we should be able to pass in the properties to it, right? Uh, value, this is not it, value style. Okay, no, 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 no. I think you can just pass the style property to it, right? Uh, let's try style, vertical line, middle, what we want. And 
Yep, that looks nice. Cool. Okay, so that header now looks fine. So I guess let's do the second section and think about how to properly bloody format this other part. We got the H2 here and this the um, uh, social, or I guess, projects related um, resources. Let's call it this way. Um, I don't like this formulation. It should be XJS. Um, oh man, how do I project the rate? How do I call that? Like, that's not social links because it's not just social. I guess relate. Let's call it just related resources. Um, yes, that that's that sounds nice. And then we're gonna have a div here. Not DDI. What are you? There we go. Okay, this div is gonna be over here. And right. So um, I close the font. Awesome. How do we? What do we put there on the icon? I don't remember them too only yeah it's like i don't i don't think i ever remember i like i'm working with the flexbox content constantly but i don't think i've ever remembered everything from it so i actually have to google every freaking time okay uh let me think so we want um let's just social no links yes maybe something like uh, this uh busy no busy here is not what we want I guess, yeah, I guess FA link maybe or something. Um, right, FA link, do we have a link? Yes, we have a link, there we go. Okay, so I guess it's gonna be the same way. So we got the, whoops, uh, we got the FA link and then we got the style, which is gonna be vertical align middle. So now we should have two nice uh, sections. Lexbox Froggy. Uh, oh yeah, I've seen it. It's quite awesome. I have not done it, but I, I almost like I'm sure for you know like 99% that even if I'm do it, even if I finish it, I will still forget all those things after like two days. <laughs> My memory is garbage, like literal garbage, and I, I anyway need to Google everything because I forget stuff. Right. Okay. So first of all, let's let's do the low hanging fruits and just um, do the links. I think I'm just gonna go for columns here as well. It's gonna be columns, and then we're gonna have div class name column. I think maybe I can just do it like uh, this, right? And I uh, select all of this and go like this is a closed div. So we are, okay, that kind of looks fine. Now what, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna also, I don't know, do I need, to, I probably need text because accessibility and all that stuff, right? YouTube and this is gonna be um, a link. Be probably a good idea to also do that to all of them at once. Um, maybe like this and slash a save that so what resources do we have we have the youtube we have the discord we have the twitch uh, probably should prioritize this a bit like this we got the github link we got my twitter we got the facebook uh, page should be over here we got the reddit we got my email um do we have anything yeah here's the, I, I i mean i have that in my discord right we have the interest of the info thing so we got the Twitch. Oh, we got the cast box. Okay, that's another thing. I should probably be somewhere here. We got the cast box. Um, we got the iTunes. We got Reddit, Facebook, Discord, Twitter. Yeah, that looks that looks fine. Okay, I think that's that's okay. You could drop the page of the ends of the. Uh, what do you mean? Drop the page of the end of the Facebook. Well, what does it mean? I don't, I don't get it. Okay. Um. I also should probably group those in a nice categories. I guess. Uh. Like maybe Twitch, Discord. Just have Facebook there. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm. A, I'm being a bit slow today. But uh, yeah, that's a good idea. 
So I think I'm gonna have um, like a bunch of categories. There's gonna be diff and diff last name. Oh, no, col what? Oh, last name columns, right? So we're gonna have a first set of columns. This is gonna be like four links to YouTube, Twitch, Castbox, iTunes. Then we're gonna have another section that is gonna be, um, actually should probably do the dev two here as well. Um, right, and uh, no, 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 no. Um, div class name columns. And the last one is gonna be sort of like social one. We we'll wanna put something else in here, but I don't know what. Uh, like just to have it, you know, symmetrical with the four things in each row, which just it just looks not so nice. Okay, let me think. Can I put anything else in here? I can. Maybe I can move the Reddit up. Wait a second. I can just. I just want it to look nice, you know. Even though the Reddit and Dev2 is not utilized as much as they should be email and uh, what can I put in the end here? Facebook email. Um, okay, you know what I'm gonna shill for myself. I'm gonna be like, support me. There you go. Nice, okay, that looks better, right? And now we just need to actually link the stuff and add some icons and make it look nicer. Um, I guess we could also increase the sizes of those things because there's not much going on on this page. Anyway, we could actually make it look a bit fancier. But uh, yeah, let's, let's, let's do this. So we got FA YouTube, I guess, right? Yep. There we go. We want um, okay, let's try putting it before the link first style vertical line, uh, you know what, I've been using it so frequently, I can just extract it, right? On uh, vertical, uh, let's call it vertical icon, right? I'm just gonna take this, put it here, and then take all of this and call it vertical icon, there we go. Uh, yeah, that looks that looks quite nice, um, I think. So we need the YouTube link now gonna copy it from here, throw it in here. And yeah, that, that looks fine. Okay, cool. Um, so yeah, we're gonna have a lot of freaking icons here. Uh, Twitch. We I, I already have Twitch, right? Um, what am I thinking about? Yeah, I can just copy this, right? So we are gonna have Twitch over here, we are gonna copy the link from the discord again, throw it in here, just make sure that's I mean, that's actually way better than I expected it would look, but <laughs> there we go. Okay, so we got the cast box. Uh, here's the question. Is there a font awesome cast box? Uh, no, there is not. Okay, that is a bit unfortunate. Uh, React icons, what kind of icons do they have? They got font icons, I, I them type icons, feather. Okay, any of this have a cast box icon? Not here, material icons, definitely not. Type icons, uh, cast, nope. Uh, I mean, I doubt this will have the cast box either. Cast box, nope. But I think cast box has this logo that is no okay it's a sound wave okay you know what cast box logo svg we will just throw in an svg in there because why the hell not um images can i get are you an svg i don't know if this is this an svg newsroom um that's not very helpful uh right can you open the image in new tab uh, that's a PNG. Okay, I mean, I guess we could use PNG as well, but I would prefer small light SVG. Uh, or we could just be like, you know what, screw this, uh, since there is no logo here. I mean, cast box is not here, right? Yep. Uh, we're gonna use podcast. This should be like a podcast thing, right? There we go. I'm just gonna use this FA podcast. And once they are uh, added, uh, no, sorry, podcast. And once they are added to Font Awesome, at some point, if they are added, we can just swap it to the to the new logo, right? Which is always nice. Style vertical icon. 
and uh, there we go check how that looks that looks quite nice um so i'm guessing there is itunes icon right yeah of course there is and i'm also guessing it's gonna be in here f a itunes there we go right i'm actually quite surprised that itunes you know after a couple of rejections finally approved uh the bxjs weekly i also should add the itunes to the to the discord information because i don't have it there so bxjs weekly here is my itunes link there we go all right uh so we got the itunes it's a german one but i guess that's fine right it should open in your locale anyway yo it opens in german um okay can we do n is that a thing no nope uh is that us is that what you want yes okay so, uh, let's have an english one just just for the sake of it uh right okay cool so this is now working we should have a nice itunes logo uh oh yeah i forgot to add the style vertical icon um we why are you i guess it's too long for it right for the space bar yeah okay okay so we are now at the discord part let's see do we have fa discord yes we do all right so we got fa discord style vertical this is the most boring stream ever because i'm literally just copy pasting things like <laughs> i don't know why you're watching this stuff guys all right uh let me think there's the discord invite link okay uh then we got the github um a very exciting stream with a very lots of things happening right f a github style uh vertical icon github link to the bxjs uh i i don't know is there here's the question so i i kind of i really like how the bxjs abbreviation works out because it's easier to say and easier to write right so is there a github bxjs group uh of course of course there is god damn it you can use font awesome podcast for that yeah that's what i did right so i used the podcast for the cast box uh, meanwhile and then the itunes they already have uh, but i don't know if, if that's chat lagging or stream lagging but i already did that so uh, but yeah anyway that's an obvious thing to do um behind the stream hello the volume it sounds great in the stream especially like i would uh guardians of the galaxy soundtrack that is definitely not something i'm gonna run on my stream in the background <laughs> um i i would absolutely love to actually have a small background music on the streams but i am terrified of having to deal with the um, copyright system because uh like i've already had one encounter with it and like screw that i'm not got i'm not even i don't even want to touch anything uh related to it uh so we actually we also got the player fm thing going i completely forgot about that Ooh, i guess yeah dev2 doesn't make a lot of sense because i primarily post my stuff there so i guess i'm gonna go with ah uh, man okay this is tricky that's actually not here hmm yeah, I remember that issue. Yeah, I mean, I got the flag for the YouTube video and it's still flagged and it's gonna expire in January sometime. So hopefully I will, will like, unless I got two more flags immediately, nothing will happen, which is a good thing. I cannot re-upload the video or anything like that, but yeah, it's 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 a bit of a bullshit, but you know, whatever. It's, it's like their rules, they can do whatever the hell they want. I forgot what I was looking for. I was looking for Reddit. Reddit, there we go okay uh, it's just i kind of you know i'm kind of i'm really glad that i my livelihood doesn't depend on youtube or twitch i mean twitch is slightly better than youtube in this regards because at least as long as you stream the worst case that can happen is you're gonna get muted you know and it's like people will immediately tell you so you can stop the stream start a new one turn off the music and it's gonna be okay ish but all of that is huge pile of bullshit it's like yeah ugh not a very nice thing I, I just recently today i was looking through the news and i saw the um wait a second a dev is it fa dev is that what it is so i thought the article um not the article i'm sorry the video actually online video that um basically 
the guy, he is an IDM music producer, right? So he writes the IDM music. He has a very popular track that is like has a few million views and, and rakes a few million views per, uh, I think it's like nearly a few hundred million views and rakes a few million views per month. So it's quite popular. And someone ripped off his track and made a remix on it using the MP3 sounds from his track, right? And then he published this remix on a YouTube and signed with like some label in his country. So it wasn't like the same country, it wasn't the US, it was something else. And that label claimed the original track as saying that, hey, this is actually a ripoff of our remix, which was based off that track. And so the guy is losing something like three, four thousand US dollars per month because those guys copyright claimed his track, which is fucking insane when you think about it. It's like, what the hell is... And, and is so... The good thing is that actually the guy um, who made the original track, he's popular enough to be able to hire the lawyers, right? So this is what he's doing now. He's hiring the lawyers and they're going to sort this thing out for him. But the, like, the fact that this can happen is freaking insane. Like what the actual hell? What if you don't have money for lawyers? And uh, as far as I understood, the YouTube basically says, you know, we cannot help you. It's a legit claim, uh, which is like, what? Like the guy literally ripped off the original music and made a remix, which is like, okay, I guess, <laughs> I guess that's fine. Uh, the problem is that it's not just the YouTube, right? So this, this also happens on, for example, the Spotify now will allow anyone uploading the music and it looks like they're going to have the exactly same copyright system as the YouTube does now, which is completely insane. So if you're a musician, <laughs> you're going to have a lot of problems. Oh boy, but yeah, it's the, the whole area makes me very sad and I I don't know. I wish someone would just fix this shit. But it's not all not 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 even the law related stuff, right? It's how the companies decide to interpret the law essentially. Which is ugh. building products with GS. Uh Jesus Christ, the Facebook URLs. Uh, okay, I think that should But no, oh, come on. Um, Facebook building products with JS, yes, and then this, come on, load up. I don't even know why I have the Facebook page. I post like one, one time every, what are you talking about? Come on, what? Oh, you know what? Screw you. I'm, I have a BXJS Facebook page, but I'm posting there like once every two weeks or something. I don't even know why I'm still maintaining that, but I guess there are some people who kind of interact with it. So I guess it's okay. Probably should automate that as well and as well and just forget about it to like post it from YouTube or something. Okay, we got the Facebook. Uh, that looks fine. Email. So email mail to yamalite at gmail.com and supports um, codes and no wait codes and net slash support html we got our tiny support page right so we got the okay you can screw off email uh, email um so what can we use we can use ads that looks nice so yeah that is a lot of icons fa ads and we need fa how you can support is there like that's not the support that i'm talking about so it has to be like um donate so they have a donate yeah there you go so fa donate i guess right fa donate cool um something i read it was well the web what it was walled the newly vetted trick Send invite to billionaire people to your wedding. You have 50-50 chance that the secretary will reply to your letter and send you a gift. <laughs> okay, I mean, that's that sounds like a con to me, but I guess um, that's probably might happen. <laughs> it's like, you know, those stories from Reddit when... Um, when like the the girl, the high school girl was like invited, I think it was like Ryan Reynolds or someone to the prom and he literally showed up, which was like quite amusing to see. <laughs> All right, uh, cool. So we got the icons, we got the stuff working. I think the URLs are okay. So we got the mail too, we got the Facebook. 
Twitter, Discord, GitHub, Reddit. Um, here's the question. If I wrap the whole thing into the A tag, how would that look? That look okay. And, and now I like it more like this, I guess. So like, I think we were looking fine. So we just have to figure out how to format the streaming schedule here. And maybe we also want a few words about what the hell is BXJS for people who come in here and look at this. Um, I think that's a good idea, right? So if you are BXJS um, div class name, yeah, I guess we don't, I don't know if I need a class, maybe I just want a P here. Um, P B X J S or building um, this with JS is, um, I have to write some description for it, but I feel like that's maybe not best done on stream because, because I suck at writing, so, so I need my time. Um, let me just do it this way to do write a proper description of bxjs stuff. Right, I think that that's that's good enough for now. So how do we do this streaming schedule? Uh, here's the question. Does font awesome has an icons for calendar stuff? Because if that would be a case, I feel like we could just do it uh, pretty nice with the icons. So Wednesday, no calendar, calendar. Yeah, there is a calendar icon. Um, okay, how do you, how do you format that? Uh, but also, is there a, like, wait a second, React time, time zone, widget. So I want some sort of a widget that would essentially show the time to a person in his time zone, not my time zone, right? Which would be quite nice. Format ticking through. No, this is like literally just time. Daytime. This sounds like a daytime picker, or maybe not. Uh, I guess we could implement it ourselves. It's not a, such a hard task. But do, 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 time format. Time format. Da, 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 da. Okay, let's try this yarn package, my favorite search engine. And we're gonna be like date, time, time zone, time zone completes. Aim at providing consistent and complete daytime interface away from the original JavaScript. No, that's not, I mean, maybe that is what we want. Immutable daytime, um, react timestamp. Maybe that, uh, GitHub. Okay, uh, if any of you guys watching know the good component for showing the time in a viewer time zone, I would appreciate the tip. Uh, I mean, I can, maybe we could just use date funds and just be like, hey, it's actually, today is a DDD. Um, so I basically have to generate a date time in Berlin time, right? and then convert it to whatever is daytime for the current user is. Uh, let me just allow all this stuff. So uh, getting started, closest to compared to is valid. Is there like time zone stuff here? Times, no, okay. Oh, date funds doesn't have time zones. Wait, really? Time zone, okay, that is interesting. I guess it won't really work. Timestamp, time 24 hours. How does it work? Is there a demo somewhere? Using with React Native. Um, I don't want to install it locally two hours ago. Oh, okay, so it's literally like I'm okay, so you can do this. Some date precision three, precision two. All right. Uh, da, 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 da. So this is the thing. UDC false. Okay. Oh man, you know what? I don't want to deal with the time zones. Uh, for now, maybe. So this could be the future feature, I guess, of the website because it's always a huge pain in the ass to deal with the dates. <laughs> right. So let me just think on how can we format this nicer. And uh, I guess maybe we could do something like H3 over here every Wednesday at 
19 Berlin time. And then we could be like, okay, we're gonna do this. How's that look? That looks... Okay, let's try H4. I just want it to be slightly smaller, not as stressed, I guess. Um, maybe we do it H3, but wait a second. So if I do it like large, but not bold, would that look nice? Font weight, uh, whoops, no. Let's try this, font weight, normal. Uh, kinda, yeah, that looks okay, I guess. And then we take the column and say, justify content center, no, not justify content. Align content, align in terms, no. Um, align self content, how the hell do you, <laughs> no, align self center. No, Te is it just text align set? Yeah, okay. <laughs> I'm overthinking it. I think even the library maintainers don't like to deal with time. I mean, time zones are a pain in ass for everyone. Let's just be frank here. So let's just say const text uh, centered text, text align center, right? This is what we want. And I'm just gonna be like, okay, style. I probably should actually do it with um, proper JSX, right? Style JSX and ta 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 ta. ta. So it's just gonna be. This is gonna be dot. Uh, doesn't wait a second. Doesn't Bulma has the center text helper? Am I just like inventing things myself right now? Modifiers, uh, typography helpers, and we got as text center. There we go. Okay, so I'm, I'm overthinking this. We don't actually need that. It's always good to write less things. There we go. And uh, we are, you know what I'm gonna do? Um, there is, whoops, I am gonna first of all copy this. I have an idea on how to, on how to solve this ki kind of. Every Saturday at 20 Berlin time. So I have this, then you know, there's this website that basically just literally one website for just dealing with, uh, um, with time zones. I think maybe I just do it like P here, but we're gonna just change this size a bit class name. So this is gonna be a uh, schedule title. I think I'm just gonna create two new classes and be like schedule uh, text and be schedule title and it's gonna be schedule text and now we're gonna introduce this style JSX thing. Style uh, whoops style JSX. Ta -da, ta -da. Um, so we are gonna have schedule title. I'm gonna have schedule text. All right, uh, gonna save that. And uh, here's what we're gonna do. So we need to change the size, font size 175, that is too much. So if we do it, um, what was the H3 size? I, I like the H3 size, so I'm just, I guess I'm just gonna do it like this for now. What was this? I just need to capture the size from here. Maybe even H4. One, I guess H4 is gonna be 125, right? Just guessing. That is too small. So I guess 1.3 M or something. One size, 125 EM. Let's try like 1.3 EM. And you are gonna go back to P over here. Yes, yes, that looks nicer. Um, there's a thing I can build with them. Okay, let me just read the chat real quick. The thing we can't even work properly, like if you haven't decided on sync on global time zone, there is no escape. Typo 200 Berlin time. Uh, yes, that that's how they count time in Berlin, didn't you know? We have 200 hours in in a day. In a day. That's 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 totally not a typo. <laughs> okay. Um, Right, so we need to do something about this thing. Font size one two em, so we just tiny, slightly smaller. But we also need to stress the 
every Saturday. Uh, <laughs> no, don't trust anything I say. Don't trust anything I say. Um, let's maybe try this. I don't know, would that look fine? And I feel like I'm a terrible designer and then, you know, I already mentioned this, but I'm probably gonna ask one of my designer friends to just have a look at this and give me some tips or how can I make this better? But I think it looks fine. Okay, okay-ish at least. Let's maybe try to make this bigger. So one five and 125 for this. Would that look better? Yeah, um, I, th I think it looks okay. I would switch this first, what are you streaming and then when? Um, uh, That's maybe, maybe that's a good idea, yeah. That's a good point actually. So let's try this. So put this here and then this here. Yeah, let's, let's see how that looks. That's a, I mean, that's a fair point. So the content should come first, like the important part should come first. Software development stream, VXJS podcast stream. Yeah, I like how that looks. Um, so here's the thing, uh, writing Berlin time is the best solution, I think. I mean, here's, here's the thing. So Ber time zone conversion, uh, here's the thing. There's this website that I always use to check, uh, I think it's world time body. Yeah. Okay. So, um, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to say Berlin 8 PM, right? Is the one or an hour. Yeah. Link to this selection. And this is going to be, okay. It's always selects the same date, but uh, <laughs> is there 24 hours, 20, uh, I guess the yeah, PM doesn't matter. Right. Um, uh, it's kind of like there is a website time zone conversion. There was a website that I remember you could just point it and it would show you the time in a specific in a, yeah, it could be an, I mean, there's a bunch of projects like this, but uh, Berlin and can I sort by custom click to set date date doesn't matter. So what I want to set is time. And I want to set it to the eight. No, it's 8 a.m. Where's p.m. Oh, there's BM. There we go. Okay. And show time zone, holiday hours. I don't care about that. Include UTC. And can you set, uh, it doesn't matter today. Okay. I guess, I guess this doesn't matter. Right. So it literally just converts the dates. Ugh. You can just remove the date from time zone body. Uh, okay. You can remove the date. Okay. Uh, maybe I just missed it. Uh, well, uh, this one. Or time zone body. Wait, time zone body. Just remove it from the URL. 8 p.m. So we set it to 8 p.m. Link to this thing and dates okay so like this oh hey, nice okay cool uh that's perfect this is exactly what i want uh and then basically just uh oh god okay how do i do this berlin time i guess we just do it like this right this is gonna be no this is actually the wrong link this is gonna be a href so i'm gonna do this and this is gonna be here for 20. right uh do we need those other parameters or can it be just like so if i kill this and i just leave this sln one nope okay i guess <laughs> i guess i guess they were required <laughs> all right and then we need one for 7 p.m right so there's the uh 7 p.m one I guess one hour as well should be sufficient. Uh, link to this, kill the date. And perfect. So there's the Berlin time. Cool. So now we have kill all of this. We don't need that anymore. I mean, ideally, I would want to have a tiny widgets that would basically show the time uh, for the user. But for now, I think as you know, the the intermediate solution, let's call it this way, it's okay. So I think also tweak the sizes a bit. Whatever, do it like this. 
Uh, yeah, something like this, maybe. And body clock widget. Uh, oh, yeah, that actually look, but I don't, I want to embed third party code into my page. That sounds like, you know what? We can just do a separate stream where we actually uh, code it ourselves. I mean, it's not a, it's not a particularly hard task. I just don't want to spend time on this right now, basically. You know what I'm saying? Right. So we are, we're fine. I think we're fine. Uh, mar yeah, margin, reducing margin sounds like a good idea. The question is, is it coming from text or is it coming? It's coming from the, why is it so, why is there so much margin? P, okay, I guess you could just be like uh, margin bottom, uh, I don't know, five pixels. No, that doesn't work for whatever reason. Why do you not work? You got, I guess it's not, yeah. Uh, Important. There you go. Important driven CSS development. Uh, that's probably not the way to go, but you know, for now that's going to do like the, the thing as well is if we take, um, this is another one of my, uh, you know, pet PVs that I have lately is that if we take the, um, what was it? Uh, usage, 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 usage. Where is the, no, not you. How's it called? I think it was usage, right? Comments. How do you do that? Um, coverage. Oh, right. I think it was coverage. Yeah, there you go. So record the coverage. And uh, one of the problems, like, okay, disregarding the fact that we are in development mode, obviously. But one of the problems, well, why do we have jQuery in our mode? Oh, that's an extension. Okay. <laughs> okay, don't show content scripts. No, thank you. Uh, where is my CSS? Um, I guess, okay, I guess we are not actually seeing the CSS because we are running in dev mode. So let's, let's run in the NPM run build. It's running in the production mode. And one of the problems that I have lately with using stuff like, um, uh, what do you call it? Like Bulma and other CSS frameworks with stuff like Next.js is the fact that while we are using Bulma and while we are getting very nice results, so I'm gonna clear that, reload that. And um, yeah, there's your problem, right? So we are we are using 1.6% of Bulma CSS, <laughs> which is, well, if you would say inefficient, you would say nothing basically, right? So we're loading 170 kilobytes and not using 166 kilo, uh, 166 kilobytes out of that. And the same goes for JavaScript. So there's like a ton of stuff that we are not actually using. It's not getting tree shaked properly. So we are gonna have to optimize some stuff over here, but uh, we can do that later. I think for now that's fine. All right, um, I guess let me just commit that. And we can also kill this BXGS website plan thing, right? We don't need it anymore. Git commits, uh, creates basic, um, index page. So I still need to, um, I still need to describe the BXJS here somehow. Uh, so I will write some sort of a couple of paragraphs of explainer of what the hell am I actually doing here. But I think we can deploy this right now. So I'm going to do exo frame in it. And yes, it's going to be BXJS weekly. We are going to, for now, I'm just going to host it as a subdomain um, on my primary domain. Don't care. Yeah, with BXJS websites. And we don't, do we need any environmental variables? And config. Oh, yeah, we need the base URL. So base URL is gonna be um, HTTPS uh, BXJS codes and .net. It's not, it's without the slash. Okay, I'm gonna add, so we're gonna create the webhook secret at some point right now. We don't need any rate limiting. We don't care about host name. We don't, um, yeah, on failure, two times is fine. Template, we don't need any oath. Why not use VS Code source control tab? I am too used to the console. <laughs> this is literally the only reason. I've been working with the Git from console for basically all my time working with Git and I just can't get used to anything else. Okay, so we need webhook secret actually here. So I'm gonna, where's my exoframe config? 
um, I've recently added this website's webhook. Recently added a secrets feature to ExoFrame. And you can now generate and um, list different secrets. So I'm going to create a new secret that is going to be BXJS website hook, right? And I am going to do it over off the screen so that you guys don't actually know what is that secret because I don't want to have to redeploy my thing so that someone starts abusing my hooks. I'm just going to use the, um, there we go. Okay, so we got the DXJS web circuit, clear that. Okay, and I think, uh, where's my chat? There we go. Okay, I think we can now, uh, let me just cut exoframe JSON. I think we can now actually deploy that. Uh, yes, I mean, I've, I've actually tried the now shell, the, you know, site service at some point, and they have this functional deployments right now, which didn't work for me when I tried to deploy the Telegram bot in there. So I just wanted to give it a shot. And I guess it just, you know, made for the HTTP services, essentially. So it doesn't work for long running stuff, or I just couldn't maybe figure it out from their documentation. But I ended up deploying it to the um, my server with ExoFrame. And I was like, well, I have to actually add the bot's token, but I can't because, you know, we can't really push it to the GitHub. So I was like, okay, I need to add secrets. And then I saw this implementation in um, now shell, which made perfect sense. So I just copied it basically. It works really well. All right, so I guess we can, okay, um, here's the question. Do we have, what do we have? We can, um, Yes, yeah, so we need to touch exoframe ignore and I need to ignore a bunch of folders. Otherwise it's gonna upload a lot of stuff in there, which is not something we want. So we're gonna ignore next nodes, um, modules. We wanna ignore, what else? Uh, indexes. No, we don't wanna ignore indexes. Yeah, we wanna ignore indexes, uh, index JSON, right? So because we don't care about the index itself. Um, we want to ignore dot get, I guess I don't need the trailing slashes here actually. So we don't want to upload any of that. Uh, do we want to ignore anything else? We got the git next components. Yeah, everything else I think is fine. Right, I think we are good. So let me just uh, run it in the verbose mode so that we know. Right, so our ignore is working fine. Well, okay, so we're running our, should probably update the exaframe uh, base image to use npm CI instead of npm install, because it's gonna be faster. I have to write this down. Um, exaframe, where's my issues? Update notes, JS, Docker, um, how to use npm CI instead of npm install. Um, this is gonna be server, enhancements, PRs welcome, and that's it. Right, so um, use npm CI in default um, Docker file for Node.js to speed up compilation. There we go, done. Right. Uh, yeah. So the install will. Oh wait, I cannot. Uh, this actually won't work, right? So this will run the install, but it will actually fail because we have the build stage, and I completely forgot about that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we have to redo that. We have to create our custom Docker file here, actually. And um, do I have any projects where I can copy it from? Because I'm feeling lazy. I think I do. Whoops. That is not what I wanted to do. Um, please. Uh, no, there we go. Okay, uh, let me think. I had I had a project somewhere that I was building using Next.js, and that I can probably just copy the things from, or maybe I should just write it from scratch, which would probably be a better idea, and use npm CI instead of npm install. So I'm just going to take the default Docker template here. Uh, Node.js, we're gonna grab this from node latest, all of that is fine. Right, so here is the thing, copy package JSON. 
we don't need the yarn lock, right? And uh, we need to copy the package lock as well. And we need to run npm ci silent. So, right. All right. Oh, okay. You have a special deployment song. That's interesting. <laughs> Copy package uh, file to cache the depths and style and then uh, run. Okay, no wait. We copy the app first, right? We expose 3000 actually in this case. We run build uh, next.js build. Um, okay, run npm run build. And then we just do npm start. I think that should make it work fine. Yeah, okay. So I, I have to actually kill that because this won't work. XORM, we kill that. Okay, um, exoframe, let's deploy it in, in verbose mode again because I might have forgotten something else. But I think that should work just fine. I'm kind of, yeah, okay, there we go. So we got the npm ci silence. So this npm ci install should be like, so I think they were claiming up to three times faster than the npm install, which is quite nice. We are, I'm definitely gonna, uh, yeah, I definitely need to update ExaFrame to, uh, you know, use the latest features because otherwise 18 seconds, what was it last time? Uh, ah, okay, it's <laughs> the longest too far away. I think it was way longer than that actually. It's like 30 something seconds. So it's definitely at least a double improvement in speed. All right, so we got the packages. Yeah, so there's caching going on. And there's the build going on. I mean, my, my, I'm, I'm renting the tiny server from the um, Scaleway. It's not the fastest and the CPU is not that buffy, but I get, you know, four gigs of RAM and hundred gigs of SSD and an unmetered connection and all of that for eight euro per, per month, which is like insane. I can deploy all the projects I want there and yeah, okay. It's a bit slow to deploy, but or eight bucks a month, whatever, I can wait a bit. Okay, so we got the server compilation, the uh, should cache the layer right now, and then we should get the package started. I think it's actually already starting it probably. Come on. There we go, compiled everything. Da -da 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 -da. Okay, cool. Let me just have a quick look over here. So we got it running. We can copy this thing and uh, try it out. Uh, and there's a bad gate. I guess it's not, is it not yet started or is it, um, is there some problems there? Uh, container was not found. Oh, I'm using the wrong thing. Whoops. Uh, I should probably also allow getting logs by the domain name actually. Uh, ready on 3000. I think I probably forgot to, oh yeah, right. The ports, um, we need to change the ports or we need to provide the label. I think it will be easier to just say, what did I, I just, okay. I, I just screwed up. Okay. Well, let me think, start server. So we will listen on the, yeah, so we can just say port 80, right? So this is exactly what we want. And then in the Docker file, we expose port 80 and uh, this should work theoretically. So we remove um, this thing. I should really allow using the domains in the exaframe because it's a bit inconvenient when you do it this way. Okay, so now deploy should be like two times faster because we literally modified just the source files, right? So we, yeah, we got to the build immediately. What was the problem with Scaleway? There is no problem with it. I mean, the, it's just the, because the, um, what you get is a virtual CPUs over here in the start package. It can be slightly slow on the compile, but um, I'm hosting like seven demos there right now and they're all working fine. So there's like no major issues with it. I'm pretty happy. Like the only downside is that it doesn't really have that many regions. I think they have like a Paris, Amsterdam and then something else. So if you want to, you know, have demos available on low latencies from other regions, then uh, well, tough luck. But this is why you have like a digital ocean that's a bit more expensive, but uh, yeah. Or he I mean, Hetzner has the same problem. They literally have like one data center in Germany. They have amazing prices, but it's, it's, yeah. 
All right, I think it should work right now. That gateway, okay, come on. Um, no, not Docker, exalogs. Oh, am I? Yeah, okay. Uh, that's that's. I know what the problem is because I am a silly boy and I am. I forgot that fast. That's a Fastify problem, or rather, Fastify quirk, is that you have to listen on zero 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 because otherwise it binds to localhost and doesn't work on uh, global global address, right? So this is what we want to add. There we go. So first port, then this, and then it basically would work on ports 300 as well, but whatever. Okay, exo. Uh, so we remove this one. And then we deploy it once again. I think this time around, it should start working properly. We had major issues with Scaleway in their network. Uh, I've heard that they were actually quite bad in the like in the early days, a couple of years ago. But I've I've come I've I've started using them like a year ago. Literally had zero issues. Uh, I I've heard these like horror stories about their network failing and everything. But oh really? Two months ago? That's interesting. Ah okay. I don't know. I mean, I, I'm only, I only have like the one server and uh, it's been up since, you know, the year ago I bought it. And yeah, I don't know. Maybe I'm lucky, but works fine so far. Yes, you do need to add uh, value added tax in your country, whatever that is, um, to the price because you have to pay it separately. But yeah. They have growing pains over booking hosts and stuff. Okay, huh, that's interesting. I, I mean, you know, I'm just saying it from my experience, but I never encountered that. But if you are, uh, if the stability is crucial for you, I guess there might be not the best case, but I'm using them as my like demo server. So I don't care if some of that stuff goes down uh, for a bit. There we go. And uh, does this search, oh, the search won't actually work, right? So we actually will get an error right now. Uh, where's my network? So we don't need that. Reloads and we got the search. Got the Google and it's probably going to return no index found exactly. So we actually have to trigger, we have to set up the webhook, right? Um, okay, so first of all, let me commit that. We got the stuff. Git, git. Let me just check that I don't commit any private keys or anything like this. Yeah, nope. Set up basic deployment uh, via ExoFrame. Uh, what? Streaming at seven? Wait, wait. Kepler is at seven a.m. for you. I'm sorry, mate, but <laughs> it's like two p.m. here, three p.m. here actually. And uh, yeah, uh, plan was unusable because of overbooking. The support came. In. Yeah, I mean, the support is basically non-existent for them as far as I know, unless you pay for the premium support, which is kind of bullshit. So I guess if you want the, you know, the um, more reliable experience, you would go for something else. Yeah, but for a crappy demo server that just runs tiny demos that can break anytime they want, that works perfectly fine for me. It's uh, cheap enough. Let's put it this way. All right, uh, so we need to set up the hook, right? So we got our BXJS codes and our add new hook. Uh, yes, here's my password, and this is gonna be uh, API. What was the what was the hook thing? Uh, GitHub API updates, right? And it's gonna be JSON and this. Uh, okay, I have to add the secrets. Um, let me what. Did I just screw it up and forgot to write down my secret? That might be the case. Oh no, I have to redo the secret. God damn it, I'm an idiot. Um, right. <laughs> this is what I get for not doing it properly. Okay. So we are gonna redeploy that again and uh, kill that. Okay, uh, secrets ls. No, you can't like, that's the point of the secrets, right? It's like, I mean, theoretically you can't, I don't know. They don't list it by default, but maybe that's, I, I think I can actually get it from if I go into the server, but this, uh, okay, you know what? Yeah, I think I can grab it because it's, it's not encrypted or anything in there, but I think there should be a way to get them. That is a very good point. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's a pretty, 
pretty valid use case. Let me just redeploy that. I think I'm just, yeah, I think I'm just gonna SSH into a server and grab it from the exaframe itself, but I should add a ticket that says um, allow fetching, t uh, getting the secrets. That will take longer than, no, that won't take longer than creating a new one. It's literally, it's literally in there. Let me just do this off the screen. It's literally in, in, in uh, exoframe um, config folder, so it's not that hard. So uh, the XS website secret, here's the value, and I'm just gonna copy that and paste it over here and we're done. We got the SSL verification, push events. Uh, let me select the individual events, so only once releases. And add webhook. All right, we got the webhook set up. Um, exit this, clear the console. I think it should work. So let's just make sure that this is articles on how to manage secrets. Uh, that heavily depends on your infrastructure. So that's like uh, basically depending on what, uh, what tools you are using, yeah, it's gonna be quite different. Okay, uh, let me just drag this back here and there is an error. What is that error? How do I know? Um, okay. We couldn't deliver service timeout, uh, re-deliver. Let's try this again because I think the website was not yet uh, up, right? So we are up now, yep. And, and now it works, hey, awesome. So I think, I think if we now have a look at the logs, we should see the payload exo logs, uh, this one. So I believe we should actually see the hook. Did I, did it log the hook or, uh, okay. Yeah, I mean, come on, man. Just, just like 7 a.m. is not worth watching me at 7 a.m. for sure. <laughs> it's like, I would not wake up to watch myself at 7 a.m. All right, let's try Google, uh, wait, no, Google. And it works now, hey, and webhook works as well. Awesome, so it all is functioning as expected. This is great, this is perfect. This is just awesome. Uh, yeah, it's all cached, all snappy. Episode switching also works really fast after they're cached, especially fast. Sweet, we basically finished everything. I mean, okay, not everything, but pretty much everything, git push. Um, but yeah. We, so I just need to write out the, um, the XJS codes and um, turn it So I just need to write this descriptor here. I also want to buy a separate domain for that and maybe do some nicer design, but uh, we're, we're basically done. Cool. So I can actually add it over here as a temporary website. Uh, yeah, I mean, we could actually set up the automatic deployment right now because why not? It takes two seconds to do so. Um, so what we need to do, I mean, with Exoframe, it is, it is very easy. So we are gonna add Travis uh, CI YAML, right? I think it's Travis minus CI YAML. If I, okay, where's, where's my Travis? Travis CI.com. And uh, what we are gonna do is we are gonna add a repository. Let me building Express.js. It's gonna be building Express.js. Uh, where's the BXJS website? Right? And uh, Travis CI. I mean, I guess we could just copy the config from the, uh, blah, 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 come on. From the weekly, right, we already have it here. So just take this and raw, copy this. Uh, we don't actually need most of that stuff. So yeah, we're gonna go with the LTS before deploy. So we don't really have any tests, which is a bit iffy right now, but uh, whatever, that's fine. And Essentially what you wanna run is you wanna say after success, um, I had a, wait a second, I actually had a exoframe demo for that. So we can copy a config from there, which is quite much easier. Uh, do, 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 node CD demo, there we go. So we just take Travis from here. Oh, it's just Travis YAML. Okay, so we actually have to rename that. Let me think, rename this. 
to Travis YAML. There we go. Okay, now it has the proper thing. And yeah, we also need the token thing, right? Exoframe endpoints. Yeah, so this is exactly what you want to do. And then exo token. But we need to say, tra okay, Travis, uh, I have the clean style, right? Yeah, okay. Travis, uh, so we need to generate the, the deploy. I think this token actually should work. Be uh, no, it won't work because it's encrypted for the other repository. Okay, right, I can just copy it. Um, right, Travis encrypt uh, environmental variables. There we go, this is what we want. So I am gonna, um, I think it was to token, I forgot, I already, I like, Exo token less, right? Right. Oh, I actually don't have any tokens there. Oh no. Okay. Well, let me generate a token on the screen. Um. But okay. I am um, a token. So it's gonna be bxjs website token. Right. I'm gonna copy that and create a new notepad over here off the screen just to put it in there, right? So we got the token, right. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, sorry, I'm, I mean, I'm, it's like I'm already overheating from all the things that we've done today. So I need to finish the stream and go on the break. Otherwise my brain will explode, but we're gonna finish this thing right now. So we're gonna, yeah, Travis encrypt my secret at env matrix. And what is env dot matrix? Uh, global secure. Secure, you can also, okay, so uh, how does it work? Global environmental variables. Hey, I secures. Uh, I really hope that you are not going to try to promote anything in the chat. Because <laughs> that username is a bit fishy, to be honest. Okay, uh, Travis uh, repository, the, uh, um, b -b 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 at end.matrix, encryption keys. Oh, wait a second. I honestly don't remember how to encrypt. So define encrypted variables in Travis. Yeah, okay. So we first of all, global secure full bar, full bar. So what is dot matrix? Is that the environmental variables is going to be encrypted? Uh, whoops. Travis, so this is the thing, right? Uh, super secrets, my secret env. What is dot env matrix? Um, right, I guess this is not what we want. I'd encrypt it, add it to your Travis. Defining public encrypted variables and travels. Uh, yeah, this is what I want, but I want it global, right? Uh, not available in here. Do, 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 do. Encrypting environmental variables. Is it like just env.global? Is that what you want? Env. Let's try it. Global, right? Uh, yes, this is correct. Uh, repository not known. Oh, um, right. Travis, Travis, ti.com, encrypt. I think it was like additional flag that you need to pass. Um, Travis org, repository, not no. I remember we had exactly the same problem last time and you had to pass I mean, I'm sorry. I know that your username might be might be completely legit, but let's be honest here, right? That looks fishy as hell. <laughs> um, you have to pass. What do you have to pass to it? Pro minus pro. Okay, that's what, there we go. Um, encrypt Travis minus minus pro. You pass it over here. No. Encrypt minus minus pro like this. All right. Okay. So, right, there we go. Okay, so this looks fine. It totally screwed up my formatting. Uh, we don't actually need any cache yarn here because it's gonna cache everything we want automatically. Right, so we want to now run this, but with our, uh, what did I need to encrypt? I need to encrypt the token, right? Uh, exo token is what I wanna say equals and then I gonna throw in my token on the sidebar here. You guys don't really see that. All right, this is the token. Cool. 
so I think this is now this is now working. Let me just reformat it again. I just want more space and uh, more understanding. I will just add the key to string to the end of the file. I mean, we're fine. So uh, did you implement search for the article feature? Yes, I did implement search for the article. It was not working because the pull request, oh, sorry, the webhook from the GitHub did not trigger it, but now it did and we actually have it working. All right, so we got the, got the Travis set up. I guess we could, oh yeah, you know what? Uh, after success and can I, I need to say that the Travis only run on master is what I want. Customizing builds only on uh, building on the latest commits. No depth before install, before script, get success out of your branches only. There we go. Branches only master is what we want, right? Cool. Um, right, git adds, git, what, 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 git status, git commit, add Travis CI auto deploy config. Unless I screwed anything up, we should now push it and we should see the Travis essentially deploying it to Exoframe, which is, well, quite easy. Hey, Finfish, welcome to the stream. We are actually pretty much finishing here. So um, yeah, let's see how that works. So theoretically, we should now see the builds. Uh, come on, repository details have been saved. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know, I know. So there is now Travis YAML, cool. And you start building, please. More options. Uh, why are you not, why are you not refreshing? running. Ah, there we go. There it is. All right. So we're nearly there. Theoretically, this should now trigger the I probably should have actually. So we got our secure token here, I probably should have actually changed something in the website. So we could see the, the difference. <laughs> but uh, I guess it's fine. You know what we actually should also there's there's like a ton of improvements we can do to the website starting from uh, mounting the index to the volume so that on redeploys at once go away, which sounds like a good idea. And a bunch of different things. Yeah, so there's like, there is a ton of improvements we could do and we'll probably will do it one point. All right, deploying using tokens. So it seems to be working actually. We can uh, try to compare. So we got the current version. Yeah, so you see, it's already removed. So it's actually once the uh, exaframe minus U minus T will be done, we should see the new size. So if we try to access it right now, it's gonna be 404. And it's still building. Build time takes quite some time because of all the compilation and everything. Currently you need to rerun the GitHub. Uh, Git yes, yeah, that's the thing. So you have to re-trigger the GitHub, Git, God, God, why is it so hard to say? GitHub webhook to re-download the new index and only then the search will start working. That is true, which we actually should do that uh, in our settings once again. Uh, uh, oh, that's that's the wrong repository. XGS Weekly is what we want. Settings, uh, webhooks. And we should re-trigger that once the deploy is finished. Come on, I know you're working. That is taking quite some time. We also should try to optimize this somehow. I mean, I don't know why exactly, to, is it is the network issue? There you go. So the, the now website should be up, right? Yep. Okay, so now we are up. So we got the CI working. Now we're gonna re-deliver the webhook. And uh, theoretically, exjs codes and nets. We should see the search working now, right? Come on. Okay, uh, Google. That is totally mistyped. Are you gonna work or not? Google, come on. There we go. Okay, so it's not working. Cool. 
So we got everything set up, the webhooks working, the updates working. So there is like a ton of things that we could improve, obviously, but uh, I think for today we did plenty. So I would suggest that we wrap the stream up and I go um, rest because my throat is starting to get pretty sore. <laughs> All right, guys. So yeah, thank you very much for watching um feel free to join our discord server if you have any questions or suggestions or want to help improve things uh commits and re pull requests to website to exaframe to anything are more than welcome thank you for watching thank you for your continued support and i see you next time bye guys